This is Jeffrey Gettleman from the Ogaden Desert, Ethiopia. It's another long day in the Ogaden, and the rebels are still on patrol. They belong to the Ogaden National Liberation Front, or ONLF, a hardcore rebel outfit that's based in the Ogaden Desert in eastern Ethiopia. These men have nicknames like Lion, Radio, Fearless, Peacock. They say they are fighting to protect their people, and they sing about their struggle. The Ogaden has been the epicenter of a separatist war for the past 13 years between impoverished nomads and the Ethiopian military one of the biggest armies in Africa and a key ally in America's war on terror. The rebels are ethnic Somalis and their goal is to win independence for their region, which they say is the only way to stop the Ethiopian military from brutalizing them. <laughs> Residents here say that government soldiers have burned down villages, secretly detained thousands of people, and raped countless women. Stop. Satir, who joined the ONLF more than five years ago, told us he couldn't just sit by and watch. Ahmed is one of the ONLF commanders. The Ogden's problems, he said, need to be brought to light. The international community didn't pay much attention to the ONLF until April when the rebels wiped out 65 Ethiopians and nine Chinese workers at an oil field. This man planned the attack. The Ethiopians have designated the ONLF a terrorist group, and they say they are armed and trained by neighboring Eritrea, Ethiopia's bitter enemy. The government blames the ONLF for a recent string of bombings and assassinations across the Ogaden area. Of the half-dozen armed insurgencies across the country, the Ethiopian government says the ONLF is among the most dangerous. The ONLF brag about how many Ethiopians they have killed. Every piece of their camouflage, they say, comes from dead soldiers. Their dreadlocks are a symbol of their struggle, and everything about these guys is bold, including how they dance in the wide open. <laughs> It's not clear how many rebels there actually are. Experts think there are thousands, including women fighters. But living in the bush is hardly a party. There's the constant threat of a run-in with the Ethiopians. I asked Peacock, who is a commander, what we should do if the Ethiopians attack. So should we stop or should we run or what? <laughs> Let's try both. both. If we have uh, ability to push back, we have to uh, stop, we have to uh, sit down. But if uh, more enemy comes to us, we have to run very slowly and retreat. When they see a village, the rebels approach cautiously. This time, the coast is clear. Every day, more and more gunmen came out of the bush. It seemed like a family reunion. <laughs> to stay in touch, the rebels used solar-powered satellite phones and CB radios. Out here, it's a wasteland with very little to eat or drink. Unless, of course, you eat cactus. <laughs> Camels are the rebels' lifeblood. They use them as ambulances for wounded fighters. They drink camel milk with tea. They eat camel meat for protein. Sometimes they get rice, 
which they scoop up with the barrels of their guns. And if they're lucky, they'll get a sheep. Slaughtered, of course, in the traditional Muslim way. All the rebels are Muslim, and most of Ethiopian's leaders are Christian. Yet the rebels insist this is no jihad. It's not a religious war, they say, but a political one. In many parts of the Ogaden, the villagers support the ONLF. They give them food, water, and information, saying that the rebels are the only thing standing between them and Ethiopian soldiers. Anab is a 40-year-old villager who said that Ethiopian soldiers twisted her nipples with pliers and raped her. She said that they go after anyone who they think sympathizes with the rebels. Many rebels said this is exactly why they joined the ONLF. No doubt the rebels are determined, but so is the Ethiopian army. And it seems like the Ogaden is going to be a battlefield for some time to come. From the Ogaden Desert in Ethiopia, this is Jeffrey Gettleman for the New York Times.